Hey everybody, it's Daniel from Walker, and I'm here with Ted Walker, VP Engineering for Walker Manufacturing. And we're here to talk about a cool new system called TOPS. It's uh, being equipped on all of our model C, T, and D tractors, and TOPS stands for Transmission Oil Performance System. So Ted, what can you tell us about TOPS? Yeah, thanks Daniel. Uh, TOPS is a system that we've been working on for a while now, and we're really excited to finally have the opportunity to one, have it in production now, but also introduce it um, to all of you. So TOPS at its core um, is a way of um, actively circulating and filtering the oil that operates in the Eaton transmissions that are in the models that Daniel mentioned, the model C, T, and D. I see we have a stand here that kind of demonstrates this, and you guys who are familiar with the Walker, you'll recognize the Eaton Model 7 transmissions here, but really everything else is pretty new. So, Ted, maybe just walk us through the components that comprise the top system. Yeah, so we do have most of the drivetrain components here, except for the final drives. Um, so a lot of this will look familiar, um, but let's talk about the new components. So the first one, and maybe the most visible, is the oil reservoir right here. The oil reservoir adds about um, 40 ounces of capacity to the overall system. Um, from the reservoir, oil flows through this line down into the pump itself. So the pump's buried back in there a little bit. Here's a, a pump which is um, outside of um, a unit. So we'll talk more about the pump in a little bit. Um, but you can also see that there's an oil filter integrally mounted to the pump body. So oil is pumped through the filter um, and then uh, from the pump, it goes through two lines, uh, one here and one here to the bottom of the transmissions. Oil flows from the bottom to the top in the transmissions. From there, it flows out the top. You can see we no longer have the reservoirs on top of the transmissions um, because the oil now flows from the top of the transmission back to the reservoir through two separate return lines. Mm -hmm. And here on the reservoir, this looks like a, a fill cap and this looks like a kind of a level check where you can check level? That's correct. If you needed to add uh, oil to the system, it'd be through this cap up here. Um, you check the oil level when it's cold and the oil level should be in the middle of that sight glass there. Very nice. You know, maybe we could talk about why we've developed the system. What are the advantages of, you know, adding a reservoir and cycling the oil and filtering it and all that? To answer that, we really should step back a little bit. For any hydrostatic transmission system, there's really two things that can shorten the life. Um, those two things are heat and contamination. So let's talk about both of those in a little bit more detail. Um, a transmission is designed to run at a temperature, and, and especially there's a maximum temperature limit. That can be set by a number of variables, um, but one of the big ones is the type of oil um, that is used. Right. And we have to maintain a certain amount of viscosity in the transmission during operation. If the transmission gets too hot, the oil thins out and it's no longer providing the protection that we need inside the transmission. So uh, many of you hopefully are, are familiar with the new mobile SHC 630 oil that we've been recommending now for um, about the last six months. Um, this oil is recommended in tractors that um, don't have tops, but also will be the oil that we recommend with the top system as well. Uh, this oil has more viscosity. Um, it's a higher viscosity, so it's thicker when it's cold, but it's also a very high viscosity index oil, um, which means that it keeps, uh, it stays thicker to a higher temperature, providing that uh, protection that we need at elevated temperatures. Um, it's also just an extremely high quality, fully synthetic oil right. um, that's already proving uh, to be a really nice benefit from a longevity and durability standpoint for these transmissions. The second detrimental thing that um, can affect a transmission is contamination. Um, contamination can come from uh, inside the transmission or externally if we're not careful when we're servicing a unit, but either way contamination is a really bad thing. And so uh, the second thing that the system is doing is actively filtering the right. oil. So um, here's the oil filter here. This is a, a Walker filter that we're having made for us. Um, and it's, it's a very high quality filter um, with effective filtering down to well below 10 microns. And so we're, wow. we're keeping the oil cooler and we're keeping the oil cleaner with the top system. So does the oil cooling happen just by pulling the oil out of the actual drives and putting them into the reservoir, just cycling outside the system, that kind of brings a natural level of cooling? The Eaton Model 7 that we use has had active cooling fins 
mm -hmm. um, on the, the input pulleys. So those are still the primary means of cooling the transmission, and it's important to keep those in good condition, both you know, making sure that the fan is in con good condition itself, but also making sure that the cooling fins on the transmission are clean. The top system provides cooling benefit by one, adding quite a bit of capacity. We're basically oh, right. doubling the oil capacity in the entire system mm -hmm. from about 40 ounces to about 80 ounces. So we're, we're adding more oil, which helps with heat dissipation. Also, this reservoir is made out of aluminum, which itself acts as an oil cooler right. because it, it rejects quite a bit of heat as the oil sits in the reservoir. Cool. I'd also mention that we're circulating the oil a couple times a minute with this system. and so. Um, this, the circulation happens quickly, right. which is also helping with, uh, with the cooling. Yeah, I think I was talking to Dean and he said like 38 seconds. Every 38 seconds the oil is cycled through. Is that about yeah, right? That's, that's right. That's about awesome. The, the time. Yep. Um, is there anything else you can tell us about this pump that you have out of the system, like how that pump actually works? Yeah, one of the big challenges with this project was fitting a pump into our tractor, which is um, fairly tightly configured, especially in this area of the unit. There's not a lot of space to work with. So there was no off-the-shelf pump that was really going to work as a good solution for this. And so uh, we decided that we needed to do a, a custom pump. And as I mentioned earlier, there was a convenient pulley to use that we converted mm -hmm. from a, an idler pulley to the drive pulley for the pump. Right. So the pump is made of, of two components. There's what we're calling the cap and the body. The filter threads onto the body. I'll pull this off. Nice. Um, and then from here, I've only got one of four bolts installed, but I'll pull the cap off so we can actually see um, the gears inside. Um, gear pumps are fairly simple and robust, and so for this application, uh, they're the perfect uh, way to pump this oil. Um, the pump is sized to get the amount of circulation that we wanted. Um, the flow rates that we were right. that we we're seeking, and here's the pulley that attaches to the outside, and so the pulley the pulley slides onto the input shaft on yep. the cap here. It's retained with a bolt, and then it just spins along with the belt here on the hydros. So the pump is pumping whenever the engine is running, right. because the the ground drive belt is always spinning nice. when the belt or when the engine is operational. Awesome. Well, Ted, I know you talked about the fact that we've been developing this system for quite a while, and, and I know we've got a test stand over here that's been running co some components of the top system. Maybe you can talk about the research you've done and what's led up to the development of the top system. So we've been using a test stand to help us in our development of the top system, but really even prior to that to learn more about the Model 7 transmission right. in general. The first thing we did early on was to go on the grass. Um, we instrumented a machine to determine how much torque it takes to drive a walker mower across mm -hmm. the grass, um, how much torque it takes to drive a walker mower up an incline. Mm -hmm. At various weights, we added a dethatcher to find out how much torque that requires to right. drive. And so um, we, we wanted to find out how we should be simulating mm -hmm. load using the test stand. So we took that information um, and set up a test stand to run at similar um, amounts of load. So our right. test stand simulates a Model T with a full, um, a full catcher box of grass. So from a weight standpoint, a Model T with an operator and a full, full catcher box, right. driving up a 15 degree incline, essentially unendingly. <laughs> so I would, note, I would note that every minute the test stand does reverse for 10 seconds. So it's not going okay. the same direction every time. We actually do stop it, reverse for 10 seconds, right. and then it continues on its endless uphill climb. So you're kind of like testing worst case scenario, but actually like real operation because you're constantly moving forward and backward. Yeah. We wanted to reverse the transmission occasionally mm -hmm. um, just to incorporate that. But um, we feel like, yeah, it's pretty worst case. I don't think right. anybody drives their machine up a hill right. forever. And then, so the test stand is putting the system under that torque of that load, but then what are you monitoring with the system? So the test stand is set up to monitor the input and output RPM of the transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, we're monitoring the output load of the transmission, and we set the, we set the test stand to a certain torque output. Right. Um, 
Uh, along with that, we're monitoring the oil temperature in the transmission as, as well as ambient temperature so we can find out what that nice. delta is. And all that information has led into what we've developed here with the new pump and the reservoir and the top system. Yeah, correct. I, I mean, early on, the test stand helped us determine that we were a little bit marginal from an oil standpoint. And so right, you know, over a year ago, one of the first things we learned is that we needed a little more oil viscosity, mm -hmm. which has really led to right. the mobile SHC mm -hmm. 630. Based on our real world testing of where our transmissions run temperature wise, mm -hmm. we determined that we needed to step up our viscosity some. Right. This oil increases our upper temperature limit from a viscosity standpoint close to 100 degrees. Mm. So it gives us some nice yeah. margin on the top end just to maintain that internal protection that we need sure. for the transmissions. Yeah, but then the advantage of filtering and the extended capacity for temperatures again. Correct, so while this oil is great for transmission or transmissions that aren't equipped with tops, mm -hmm. um, this oil is also a perfect, right. um, per perfect accompaniment to the top system, um, adding more oil quantity mm -hmm. um, with the additional heat rejection. It just helps everything run even cooler. Very nice. So maybe talk about some of the way the top system changes the way you maintain sure. your transmissions. So for a long time, we recommended not servicing the Eaton transmission. It's a sealed unit. Um, and for many, many years, that, that worked really well. Um, the downside of that is if there was internal contamination in the unit based on just you know, running right. you know, wear metals in the oil, um, you know, that contamination would stay in there and over time it could, it could cause damage or shorten the life that, that we would expect from the transmission. The reason that we recommended not servicing it was to try to prevent contamination from getting in in the first place. And so there's pluses and minuses to that. Um, if you're very careful servicing the transmission not to um, introduce contamination, it can be good to change the oil. Um, but that's been our stance. Uh, traditionally with the top system and actually I should say as of last year with the introduction of right. mobile SHC 630 we've actually changed that to now we are recommending whether or not you have tops on your machine or not to regularly service the oil in your transmission right. we've decided that um, servicing the transmission at regular intervals uh, with this new uh, high-performance oil um, outweighs the, the potential risk sure. of introducing contamination into the unit during that servicing. Right. But then with the top system, there's a, probably a different schedule even. Or So with the top system, we are recommending a 100-hour break-in oil change, mm -hmm. uh, break-in oil and filter change. And then after that, it will go to a 500-hour interval service. So 100 hours and then 400 hours after that, at yeah. 500 hours, we would do another oil and filter change. And then after 500 hours, it'll become a regular 500 hour interval. Nice. Well, Ted, the Walker has always been known for its durability and its maintainability. I imagine that the top system has some implications on that. So maybe you could talk about that and maybe even how it affects warranty. Yeah, the, the Eden Model 7 has always been a very reliable transmission, but the top system is going to take it to new levels of reliability. Um, and because of that, uh, we've decided to make a change to the warranty coverage right. on the Eaton Model 7 transmissions. On the drivetrain, right? Correct. Yeah. So traditionally, we've had a three-year um, three warranty on the transmissions that's been prorated after 1,000 hours. Mm -hmm. um, the new warranty coverage on this is going to be three years, but unlimited hours and full replacement wow. over, that, over that period. Right. So that's just saying if, if it's maintained the way we're recommending, it should really last. Yeah, and that's an important stipulation too. In order to qualify for the improved coverage, uh, the transmission system, the top system, needs to be maintained at a dealership according to that mm. uh, 500 hour servicing interval. Right, right. I know I talked to Bruce Tallman, we're gonna do a, a video that actually shows how to drain and refill the oil, but just maybe in real simple terms, talk about how you would actually go through that process of draining and then refilling the, the system. Sure, the, the service is fairly simple. Um, when you're draining the oil, there's three points that have to be addressed. There's the reservoir, there's right. a drain plug under here um, to drain the reservoir itself. And then the transmissions are drained by removing the hose fitting or removing the hose from the 90 degree fitting on the bottom of each transmission. It's a, 
it's a flare fitting, so the hose comes off very easily. Oil drains out the elbow. Sure. Um, and then just a matter of refilling and changing your filter. Right. When you change the filter, there's also going to be um, some oil that will yep. come out of the filter. So it's pretty easy. You pull the deck off the machine, slide a, a round drain pan underneath the tractor, and you can really, from um, you can drain all four locations: the reservoir, both transmissions, and the filter, and it'll all drain into one into one drain pan without having to move it around. Very nice. Well, very cool. Um, how do you get the tops? I know we talked about it, you know, being equipped at standard and new model C, T, and D tractors. But what about those older tractors with Eaton transmissions in them? Yeah, so current production machines, C's, T's, and D's, are currently being equipped with tops um, as we speak. Right. So new machines equipped with tops will be at dealerships very soon. So that's one way to get it. Yeah. Uh, the second way to get it would be to retrofit an older machine with tops. We don't have the retrofit kit available quite yet, but um, we're shooting for an early April release for a retrofit kit. Nice. Um, it's not an inconsequential kit to install. There's right. some labor involved. Um, you can see it, it's it's uh, it, it's the the middle of the machine that we're working on here. Yeah. So um, it's going to take a little bit of a little bit of time to install, um, but for a lot of people, um, it's going to be worth it um, awesome. to get that extra peace of mind and uh, the extra life out of the transmissions. Very good. Well, this is, a, this is amazing. The top system I know we've been talking about internally for a little bit, and it's really awesome to get to now share it with all of you guys. Uh, I, I know once you see it in action, you're going to really uh, yeah, be impressed with what Ted and the engineering team have been working on. Uh, any final words, any final thoughts for people? Uh, like you said, it's been a while coming. Yeah. Um, we're, we're really excited to release this. Um, we think that it's going to breathe a, a lot more life into the Eden Model 7 and, and let us do some things in the future that, nice. that we want to do. Well, Ted, this has been great. Thanks so much for your time and for you know explaining through all this. And for all of you guys, thanks for joining us. Be on the lookout for the TOPS system in the new walkers that are coming out and then also that retrofit kit that Ted suggested. So um, thanks for joining us and we'll see you guys next time.